So the, can question, the question, yeah, the question is uh, from the audience. The question says there's a big debate about the independence of the central bank. How independent should the central bank be? <laughs> I, I laugh because, of course, this has been uh, the center of a major storm recently. Uh, I uh, have been misinterpreted uh, on this question of independent central bank. Uh, my position is that there should be as little political in interference as possible. Uh, in central bank uh, policy making. However, however, the central bank is setting policies which have a bearing on not just what they're mandated, or let's look at the Monetary Law Act. Uh, it says that it, the central bank is to be mandated to just focus on inflation. But the policy weapon that they use is interest rates. Now, there's no way in which they can set interest rates just to target inflation without also having a bearing on economic growth, employment, and a whole host of other phenomena. And this means to say the central bank cannot act independently of, let's say, the Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of Industries, etc. There has to be a discussion about the ramifications of any type of policy measures that they're proposing to take with respect to inflation. Now, uh, I just wanted to mention one thing and ask Mr. Deva, because he said he worked with Margaret Thatcher. I remember Margaret Thatcher was vehemently opposed to an independent central bank for precisely the reason I now mentioned. Now, you couldn't get a more pro-market person than Margaret Thatcher, you know? So it wasn't to say that Margaret Thatcher was some closet leftist who, you know, wanted to control the, the central bank from the perspective of, you know, some socialist strategy or another. What she understood very clearly is the policies of the central bank have a bearing on many, many macroeconomic phenomena. And therefore, the governor of the central bank has to be answerable to ministers whose portfolios actually uh, will be influenced in one way or the other by central bank policies. So this was the main thing that I wanted to communicate. Uh, and, you know, if I if I if you indulge me for just one more minute, uh, Dinesh, the other problem I have with the Monetary Law Act is it's founded on a complete misunderstanding of how inflation comes about in our society. You know, there's this old and discredited quantity theory. I'm sorry, Margaret Thatcher was actually misled at that time with this quantity theory. And we now have a situation, and this is the crucial point, that the central bank cannot finance the budget in any circumstance whatsoever. Now, if you just look at 2021, all countries in the world ran huge budget deficits and all countries in the world actually had their central banks financing a large part of those deficits. If that didn't happen, then we would have had not only the impact of the pandemic on these countries, but they would have been hammered with extraordinarily high interest rates at the same time if they were forced to borrow from the domestic market. So, you know, this is why I think there needs to be greater consideration given to the Monetary Law Act and the notion of an independent central bank, which is built into that. So Dr. Olson has this view that we should have an independent debt office as well as an independent uh, banking commission. What, what are your thoughts around that? Sorry, uh, Dinesh, I missed the first bit of that. No, I mean, the need for an independent debt office and, a, uh, and an independent banking commission. Well, I actually believe that the best way to achieve what I presume the IMF is trying to achieve, which is uh, restraining fiscal deficits, 
I believe that many countries have in place debt ceilings. And I believe that that is actually the best way in a democracy to control the, the, the budget deficit and, uh, you know, ex excessive expenditure, etc. That you say, okay, if you want to exceed these debt ceilings, you have to go to parliament and you have to justify that. You know, to use the central bank to actually control the fiscal deficit is insane. You know, it's going to destroy the financial system. And I'm 100% I'm confident of this, like has happened in many African countries. They've actually tried this and then reversed the policy later. Okay, so I, I, somebody mentioned to me Ghana was one example of this, and there are apparently other examples, because you can't do this, not in a modern economy. This is not possible. So I think before we get into a mess, we need to have a modification of the monetary law and have independent assessment of debt ceilings. You know, is this valid, what the government is proposing to do? Uh, and have that, you know, without any political interference. Uh, I believe in countries like the UK and the US, you have institutes of fiscal studies, which also look at the budgets and then advise parliamentarians with regard to the increase of those debt ceilings, you know, whether this is justified, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. This is, I believe, the way in uh, that we should proceed in a democratic system. Thank you.